Hello everyone, good evening and thanks for tuning in. I'm Cassandra, the Nikon Z creator, and I'm happy to bring the Experience Nikon webinar to you. We are about week 6 in our series, and I hope it has been educational and inspiring to you so far. Well, you see, video is continuing to grow in popularity and importance in our daily lives. We stream our favorite shows, tutorial, interview on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. So as a creator, it is now vital to stay on top of the latest advances to create your next big hit. At the same time, you want to be equipped with reliable and efficient tools, which are important in producing quality outputs. Having a trusty and reliable Nikon camera like the Z6 is excellent for its video outputs besides just stills. Thanks to various features like the 8-bit 4K UHD, 10-bit analog, and 12-bit video capability. Besides the camera, we know that there are many other tools needed in your workflow as well, from lighting, audio, stabilizers, production software, even right down to the storage of your files. We know that these tools are essentially part of your workflow integration. And this is what the Experience Nikon series is all about for creators like you, creativity and collaboration. So each week for about 30 minutes, we'll have on board a brand partner to share some basic concepts and tools to help you make the best out of your intended video creations. So last week, we talked to other stores on the innovative ways of file sharing and storage. Today, we are sharing a pre-recorded video from Luma Touch to show you how their advanced editing tools designed for mobile so that you are able to edit your videos wherever your adventure takes you. Before we get started, keep in mind this is an overview of what you can do in LumaFusion. If you want to know more information about how to use LumaFusion, be sure to check out our reference guide and our tutorial series for more detail. Links to the guide and tutorials are in the description. Also, in LumaFusion, you can press and hold the Help and Settings button to see overlay descriptions of all the buttons mentioned. And feel free to reach out to support at lumatouch.com if you have any questions. Hi there, I'm Scott, quality assurance and workflow guy with Luma Touch. I'm just back from that rainy shoot at the skate park with Hale and I'm about to transfer footage from the Nikon Z6 into our iPad Pro. Now with that card reader plugged in, I'll just go to the library sources, tap on add edit sources, and I see files in the available column. I'll grab that and slide it into In Use, then close out of there. And now I can navigate to the Nikon Z6 folder. I'll just tap that to open it, and the thumbnails will zoom in. Here I can begin reviewing my footage to get this edit started. Other than using Sources Files to import your media, you can import media via Sources Photos using your photo app, a Western Digital Drive, a Narbox Drive, and you can manage your sources and the order in which they appear using the Add or Edit button to remove libraries, add libraries, and rearrange them if you like. You can also import from cloud storage providers like Dropbox and Google Drive and Box, uh, as well as import from wireless or uh, network drives by using import media sources. Again, that Add or Edit button is handy in there as well. There are a lot of import options to choose from in LumaFusion. Now that you know how to import your media, I'm going to go ahead and get this Z6 footage bounced over to Keith so that he can cut together a rough edit for us. Take it away, Keith. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. I'm Keith. I handle media production and customer success here at LumaTouch. So Scott went out, shot some footage on the Nikon Z6. I'm going to take that footage 
and create a rough assembly with it. And while I'm doing that, I'll be going through an overview of timeline editing from previewing and trimming your media to actually placing that media on the timeline and editing with it. Let's do it. To get started, you can create a new project by tapping the Create Project button. You will then have the option to select your frame rate and aspect ratio. The Nikon Z6 footage was shot in 2997 FPS and its aspect ratio is 16 by 9. Tap on the plus icon when you're ready and your timeline will open up. So Scott went ahead and uploaded the Nikon Z6 footage to Dropbox for me. I went to Import Media Sources, Dropbox, and then imported the media. The media ended up in Sources, Imported, Dropbox. To preview a clip, just tap on it. In the Sources Library, you have options to select multiple clips, or select all clips and place them on the timeline. You can even color tag clips to find them easier. In the imported library, you have the option to delete selected clips from your folder by tapping on the trash can icon. Just make sure that none of your media isn't already in an existing project. If it is, then the trash can icon will not get highlighted. If you're looking for something specific, tap on the search button to bring up the search bar. In my case, I want the library to only show the clips that I just tagged yellow. And you can tap on the view and sort button to change the way your media is displayed and organized. Some quick highlights for previewing your media are, you can scrub through the clip and then choose your in and out points by either tapping the in and out icons or by using on-screen gestures, swiping down on the viewer for your in point and swiping up for your out point. And next are your jump left and jump right buttons to jump to the beginning and ends of your clip or your in and out points. Next is pretty obvious. You can play and pause. And the final highlight of previewing is your Send to Timeline button. Personally, I like to place media on the timeline by touching and holding the viewer and dragging the clip to the timeline. But you can also send to timeline by dragging or double tapping your source clips. In LumaFusion, you have up to six video tracks and six audio tracks to work with. You can also place audio clips on your video tracks so you essentially have 12 audio tracks to work with. Above your timeline is your Timeline Navigator. It allows you to see an overview of your entire timeline. You can scrub through it or tap certain areas of the navigator to get to sections of your timeline more quickly. The Headers button gives you more control over the video and audio tracks. A good button to highlight here is the Insert Overwrite button. When Insert Mode is activated, you can insert and shift clips on your timeline with your first video track being the anchor for all of your other video and audio tracks. When Overwrite Mode is activated, you can overwrite existing clips on your timeline and while in this mode, no shifting occurs. Regardless of the actions, the clips stay in their position in overwrite mode. Keep in mind, only the first video track can toggle between insert and overwrite mode. All other tracks are in overwrite mode. The mixers button gives you access to audio sliders where you can adjust the audio levels of each track. Selecting a clip gives you access to more options on the toolbar below. Some highlights on the toolbar are the clipboard button. Here, you can copy and paste clips or you can copy and paste attributes from a clip. Next is the multi-select button. When multi-select is activated, you can select multiple clips on your timeline either by tapping clips individually 
using the Timeline Navigator to select a range of clips or by lassoing multiple clips. When you combine the clipboard with Multiselect, you can copy and paste multiple clips on your timeline and you can even copy and paste clips between projects. Next, this scissors button is your split tool, allowing you to split clips on your timeline. You can also split a clip by tapping with two fingers at the playhead. And the final highlight is the trash can button to delete clips from the timeline. But you can also delete clips by dragging a clip up and letting it go outside of the timeline area. So now that you know enough to get started with the rough edit, let's hop over to the rough edit that I created with the Nikon Z6 footage and talk through it a little. All right, so we have a rough edit here. Just gonna go through it a little bit. So we have a bunch of hard cuts, no real audio transitions or anything. And I'll be passing this off to two other people who will be sort of sprucing up this piece with titles, music, and uh, voiceovers along with, you know, effects and just sort of overall sprucing up this edit. But this is sort of a rough assembly. Um, the theme for this uh, piece, um, Scott went out and shot our subject here, Mr. Hale. He's a BMX rider. And uh, they went to a local skate park. And um, the sound bites, sort of the interview stuff that I have for this piece, um, are of him talking about this ramp here. Um, specifically, this corner over here called what's called a hip. He's educate. He was educating me as I was editing this. <laughs> so he's just kind of talking through how to ride it successfully, and you know the issues that arise if you um, sort of ain't you know ride it on an angle the wrong way. So I just took that interview section, um, you know that talking head, which is this clip here, along with like I think it was one other clip. Can't find it right now, but. Um, it was two clips of him talking it out and, uh, pretty much just threw that on the timeline here and cut it up into bits and pieces, um, and found the right moments, you know, that felt like good sound bites. And so, you know, you have him talking with the audio. So this, uh, jump, this kind of jump is called a hip because it's made up of like a kind of a corner. So you have to turn in the air. And then, you know, you still hear him, but it cuts away um, and it sort of turns into an L cut. Um, and then around here, his audio comes back in. I just actually just learned this hip and what's different about it than all the other hips in this pool. Um, and we just have sort of sound bites while he's riding the hip. You know, so basically I just built a story around this little story of him talking about riding a hip um, and just turn it into a cool little doc, you know, short little piece that could end up on a magazine or something like that, sort of a tips and tricks video, if you will. Um, and then just found B-roll um, and cutaways to kind of complement and create atmosphere for the entire piece overall. This is just sort of a good starting point for our other editors to kind of hop in and get a little bit more creative, spruce up the piece a little bit more. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Good job, Hale. <laughs> I got educated, man. All right, so the rough cut is done. I'm going to pass this project over to Nell, and she's going to put her flavor on it, adding some titles, some music, and some voiceover. Over to you, Nell. Thanks, Keith. Hi, I'm the product specialist here at LumaTouch. Today, I'll be showing you what LumaFusion can do with music, titles, and voiceovers. Let's jump in. Here is a project that Keith has edited so far. The first thing I want to do is add music. For music, I'm going to use Storyblocks. If you need stock music, footage, or audio, this is a great resource to use in LumaFusion. Once you're in the music library in Storyblocks, you'll see that there are genres at the bottom that you can use to filter out your library. For this project, I'm going to be using Pop. Something that's great about the Storyblocks library is you can assign colors to different clips. Then you can sort the library based off of those colors. You can select and preview any song that you want to before you import it onto the timeline. Simply drag it from the library onto the timeline to insert it into your project. Let's hear how it sounds. Uh, 
So I can see that the volume is peaking into the red and I can't hear him speaking over the music. So I'm going to lower it down to about negative 15 decibels. Next, I want to add a title to introduce who our talent is. To add a title, I'm going to tap on the Add Clip button at the bottom and select Overlay Title. Simply double tap the clip on the timeline to edit it. Here it'll open the title editor so you can edit what the title actually says. I'm going to be using a user title preset that I previously made. This preset contains the text contents, the font style, the size, and the effects. Now I want to add some more information under another text layer within the title clip. This one will say where this is located and the age of our talent. Another thing that you can do with presets is to save user styles. These are used to change the style of the text, but not the contents of the text. As you can see, this user style already contains the font style, size, color, and drop shadow of the text. Once you're finished editing your title, you can now trim the clip so that it's as long as you need it to be. And then you can actually add transitions to the title clip. For this title, I want to use the Grow transition. Now I want to add a voiceover to finalize and conclude this project. To add a voiceover, tap on the Add Clip button at the bottom again, and then tap on Voiceover. You will then see a UI pop-up that actually shows the levels of your voice as you speak into the microphone. Once you're ready and tap Record, it will initiate a countdown from 3 to 1. Once you're done with your voiceover, tap the record button again. You will then have the option to redo, OK, or review your recording. This recording is now an audio clip that you can trim, move, and edit however you would like. Now that I'm satisfied with what I've added to this project, I'm going to hand it over to Terry to add some final touches. Take it away. Great work now. Hi, I'm Terry. I'm the co-founder and lead designer here at LumaTouch. For this section, we're going to add color and effects to the edit that Keith and Nell created. And so it'll be ready for export. So let's get started. So I can see right away that Nell and Keith have left me three markers where they want me to change things. So on this first clip, he wants me to color correct and keyframe some movement to make it more exciting. All right. So I'm going to double tap on the clip and then go over to the color and effects editor. And up here you can see all the different effects editors and color editors you have. I'm going to go to the color editor and start with a preset for contrast. You can see there's a lot of different controls I could change if I chose to. Double tap to reset any control. Now I'm going to go over to frame and fit. And I'm going to try to add some movement to this effect. So I'm going to turn on keyframing down here in the lower left. Then I can pinch with two fingers to zoom in or out and position with one finger. By doing that, I've cut off his head at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and move that down a little. Now you can see between the keyframes how this moves. And then about 10 frames from the end, I'm going to add another keyframe. Then I'm going to jump to the end and zoom right into that bike. Anytime you make a change, it's going to automatically add a keyframe. So let's play that. Exit the editor in the upper left using the back arrow. And now let's play that in the context of the greater timeline. You can see I need a little bit more of a transition between the bike and this title coming in. So I'm going to go to my transitions and choose Zoom Blur. The next marker says to add a blue sky. So I'll go to the library and choose Titles. And I've already created a blue sky title. So I'll drag that to the timeline and then double tap. 
tap on color and effects, and then add a Gaussian blur to soften the edges. Now I'm going to tap on frame and fit and at the bottom of the list on the right side, you'll see blending. And here in blending, we can choose how we want that blue sky clip to interact with our main timeline. There's a lot of different choices you could make, but in this case, I'm going to choose multiply. And then I'm going to make it a little more subtle by choosing to blend it out a little. So right here at this cut point, we're going to need to add a transition so that that blue sky doesn't pop in. So I'm going to go to the transitions and drag across dissolve to the cut. Now it fades in really nice. And the last thing is to add a LUT and a vignette to the picture of hail. So I'm going to go to the color and effects editor. The second button at the top is the LUT button. And in here, you can find a variety of LUTs, some from camera manufacturers, and there's also creative LUTs. So I've applied a LUT called Trendy Film, but I can also add an original color correction from LumaFusion by tapping on the color tab and then tapping on original, which will give me all the controls I need to adjust this shot. Finally, I'm going to add a vignette around the edges to draw the viewer's eye more towards the boy's face. So I think we're in a great place with this project. I'm going to package it up and send it to Andrew so he can show you how to export. Over to you, Andrew. Thanks, Terry. Now that Terry's finished the edit, I'm going to show you how to export it as a movie to YouTube. I'm also going to show you a few other exporting options that we can use. Okay, so the export panel is found down here in the lower right corner. And you can see that the export panel provides us uh, with various options. Uh, I can export a movie, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, you can export audio only as well, so that uh, if you want to send the audio to a podcast, for example, then you could do that. You can export a LumaFusion project package, which is an archive of the project. You can export an XML project package to Final Cut Pro X, so you could continue to edit on uh, in Final Cut Pro. And lastly, you can export a snapshot, which is essentially a screen grab of the frame you're currently parked at. So let's choose movie. So the first thing is we're going to, after we've cho chosen movie, uh, we have to choose where we're going to send it to. We're going to choose YouTube, but you can see there's a lot of other options as well. So let's choose YouTube. And once we do that, we see that we have a panel that lets us sort of make uh, various selections for the movie we're going to create. So we can change the resolution, we can change the megabits per second, uh, we can change the codec that we're going to use. For example, right now we're using H.264, we can choose to use uh, H.265 or HEVC. And we can also uh, choose HEVC with transparency. So um, if we're doing some graphic work in here, we can export that with a transparent background. So let's change a couple of settings. Resolution. I'm going to choose 1080. And the video quality, I'm just going to bump up a little bit to uh, 20 megabits per second. You get an estimate of file size down here. Now that we've got our settings the way we want them, we tap on the button in the top right. And now we can rename our movie and add descriptions tags, uh, put it into a particular YouTube category, and also define its privacy option. We're going to keep it at private right now. First thing it's going to do is write the movie, then it's going to upload the movie. So it's going to take a little while for YouTube to process the movie once it's uploaded. So we'll take a look at that in a second. So all of the options that I have in the share export panel work in almost identical ways. LumaFusion project package, for example, again, allows me to select a destination. I'm going to use other app airdrop. I'm going to choose trimmed media just to make the package smaller. I can change the name of the project and then tap on export. So in this case, what I'm going to do is send my project package to my Mac. And here's the share sheet 
that pops up. I'm going to tap airdrop. And there's my Mac. So the purpose of the LumaFusion project package is it enables me to essentially save my project somewhere and then at a later date I can just restore it onto a iPad or an iPhone and carry on editing. And now that we've finished exporting the movie and the LumaFusion project package, I think it's time we took a look at the final video. Jump, this kind of jump is called a hip because it's made up of like a kind of a corner so you have to turn in the air when you go over it. I just actually just learned this hip. What's different about it than all the other hips in this pool is that it's a little bit scarier than all the others because all the others have a smooth landing, smoothed over, but the landing on this hip is sharp so it's kind of scary because it's a hard edge instead of a smooth edge. So if you hit the hard edge with your back wheel when you're trying to go over it, it'll pop your back wheel over. But actually, this specific hip, the edge has been grinded off because people have grinded so much. So it's not much different than all the other hips except for the tiny little qualities of the angles that you go at it. for providing an in-depth look into your powerful editing software. For reference guides, tutorials, and link to the app download, please refer to the description box below. Once again, we hope you have learned something useful and important from today's session brought to you by Nikon Asia and Lumatouch. We'll take a break from the webinar next week, but do join us at the same channel at 8pm. We'll have something special and exciting coming your way.